The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture and uh, pleased to be joined now by Carl DeConnick-Smith, farmer from Fisk, Saskatchewan area. And Carl, for those who, uh, who follow you on Twitter, uh, we know you have uh, adopted, been an early adopter when it comes to optical spraying technology. Why don't you fill us in on what you have uh, in terms of your setup on your farm and we can get into some of the lessons that you've learned so far applying this in, uh, in a Saskatchewan broad acre farm. Yeah, we're using the uh, um, optical uh, spray technology. Um, it's a light-based system. Uh, weed it. Uh, we've used that on our farm for uh, five years now. Uh, I've got probably close to 2,500 hours of, of seat time, so uh, a lot of variables that, that I've seen over those five years, um, and it's been a it's been a really uh, uh, well received, used, uh, uh, excellent system. So this would be what's called a, a green on brown spraying system? Correct, yeah. We're using it for uh, burn off, uh, chem fallow, and uh, fall spray purposes. Th there's some r really slight nuances that you can use it for, a little bit of desiccation, some small things, but generally, yes, just a green on brown uh, technology. Okay. The big question, of course, uh, or the, one of the first questions that comes to mind is how much have you been able to reduce the actual use of, of uh, active ingredient applied or a chemical that you have applied versus if you've been doing a, a entire field kind of application. Right, yeah, it obviously varies season to season, uh, field to field, uh, but in general, um, it's gonna vary from 90% to, to 30%. Uh, burn off, you're probably gonna average around that 60% on a, say on an 8,000 acre burn off. Fall, spring, probably a little higher than that even. Uh, you probably get into that 70% average and, and that literally can vary from that, you know, 90 to, to 50% in most of those applications. Okay. So, so, so yeah, it, it is significant. Uh, uh, five years ago, we felt uh, about a three year return on investment. Now with the increased chemical costs, um, it, it's a, a two year return on investment uh, with the weeded technology. Okay. Yeah, so I guess rising uh, input costs or chemical costs would, would factor into that. Another question I think producers often have is how do you know how much to mix? Uh, and what do you do with the, the what's left in the tank? Or if you have to go and mix a partial tank, how do you uh, how do you deal with that issue on your farm? Right, yeah, that's interesting. That's usually the first question. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> then sorry, I mixed them up. <laughs> no, that's good. That's usually the first question that, uh, that I usually get asked. Um, the easy answer is it usually doesn't matter because if you have a system like this you're generally doing lots of acres so you know at the end of a thousand acres if you have to turn it to uh, just a full spray um, that's fine the the long answer is after a, a, just a handful of fields you get a pretty good eye for surveying looking at a field you'll know that it might run you know an average of that uh, two to four gallons an acre um, uh, so, you, so, you, so you've got a pretty good idea once you have some experience with it. Okay. Is direct injection a, a benefit in that as well? It's a benefit, not a prerequisite. Uh, um, yeah, like our sprayer, it, it is the only one in the world that, that combines the two technologies. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it is really nice because it does, you, you don't have to worry about when you run out. Uh, you, can, you can shut that direct injection off. You can change your, your overall rate from one side of the field to the other. Uh, but because I said it's not a pre prerequisite, it really is just normally loading up your sprayer with your, uh, your normal amount of actives that you're actually spraying out per tip. And uh, it will run out where it runs out. <laughs> yeah. So why is your sprayer the only one in the world that has those technologies combined? Or why, why don't we see more of those? Wouldn't, wouldn't it make sense? It, it makes sense to me, yeah. uh, you know, as, as an early adopter, uh, a lot of things that make sense to myself don't always make sense to, to, to everyone out there, which, which is fine. Um, I, I think the biggest reason uh, that direct injections maybe not uh, used is because uh, people are a little bit scared of uh, maybe an operator that uh, that is using it maybe they forget to turn the button on or uh, uh, you know it, yes there's a trust factor there 
Um, my experience is uh, it's it's a very simple system um, and works good. I've, I've made the comment to to John Deere and and some of these companies to to not totally dismiss that technology because I think as as these new technologies come aboard like spot spraying, green on green, green on brown technologies, there may be more uses that we might find f for that type of uh, direct injection so that we can change uh, our our rates of different chemicals in relationship to what we have in the tank. Yeah. You mentioned green on green spraying and I want to ask you about your thoughts on, on where that technology is headed. But first, uh, one more question about uh, the green on brown. Do you find that it's more effective on certain weed species or that you're potentially doing a better job with certain weeds than others? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so with these systems, it's really, it's important to understand their, what they're good at and what they're not. Uh, spot spray technologies are, are very good at um, uh, seeing weeds that grow in patches, have broad leaves, so that, that'll give you an indication of when you go look at your field, what type of weeds you have, whether you need a background rate or just a spot spray. Um, yeah, that, uh, there, there's a little bit of a, a learning factor w with that, yeah. I'm assuming a broadleaf would be easier for it to find, or a patch of weeds, than uh, I, I believe you used the example, a, a wild oat that's just emerged. Right, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a great example is um, uh, when the wild oats start to emerge. They, if, you, if you look at them from above, they're just like a pinhead, so they're very hard to see. So at that point, uh, if that's something that you're really after, that's when you would uh, switch to a, uh, a dual uh, mode, so a background rate across the whole field. Shifting then to green on green technology, which is kind of seen as the, the next tier, and I think we sometimes maybe don't wrap our heads around completely how much more machine learning and a artificial intelligence and everything else, the computing power that has to go into green on green technology. Your thoughts on how, uh, whether, well, I guess some farmers I think are probably waiting for green on green before they jump into having optical spraying technology on their sprayer. Do you see it as that simple a move that it's just another step forward or, or how do you compare, I guess, the adoption and application of green on green versus your experience with green on brown? Yeah, I think green on green is coming. There's a lot of investment coming into it. Um, I, I believe uh, in full adoption, we're still a number of years away f uh, from that fully being implemented. Uh, it's definitely on, on, on top of my mind and a lot of other producers. Uh, I think th there's some low-hanging fruit before that and, and trust in systems that we can um, gain and use from just the green on brown technology, uh, sort of walking before we, we run. Uh, that that will come. I, I, I just don't. I don't think it's uh, going to quite solve all of the problems that we're all hoping that it will. I think there's uh, a, a lot of our problems can be solved just simply by green on brown um, uh, before these technologies get matured. And one of the one of those reasons which you alluded to in the presentation here today is uh, the accuracy rate of green on green. What is what is going to be an acceptable accuracy rate when you're applying in crop and you don't want to have those weed escapes? It, ex exactly. So that, that, that that's going to be the question. I, I don't know if too many people can answer that because the technology is being developed. But if it's, you know, 80... 85 percent accurate um, th th that's fine for a, a first pass application that might not be acceptable uh, for many farms on that second or last pass because it's it's our last chance to get uh, all, all the weeds that uh, we need to get controlled uh, uh, before we the, the crop matures past its uh, last stage okay Final question then, Carl, you've been working with this technology for five years now. What's the, the next step that you're looking to implement on your farm or what do you see on the horizon as, uh, as the next advancement step forward in this area? Right. Uh, well, I'd love to put this technology on autonomy. So we are working already with uh, the, Ra the Raven OmniPower system. Um, uh, the, the next step is definitely to look at putting the spot spray technology on autonomy. Uh, also looking at companies like uh, Swarm Farm uh, out of Australia. Uh, I had a few chats with them. Uh, so that's that's definitely that kind of systems are, are they're on our radar um, uh, just to make things just a little bit more more efficient. Uh, uh, just do, do more acres with uh, the same amount of uh, people, labor. Yeah. 
that autonomy discussion I think is warrants a whole other interview. So we'll we'll yeah. maybe do that another day. But uh, thank you for your time today, yeah. Carl. Thanks, Carl. Yeah.